Welcome back to the Mental Game of Poker podcast. I'm your host, Jared Tenler, back with another great show. Today, my guest is Team Poker Stars Pro Liv Barry, who is one of the most dynamic people out there, whether it's poker, the guitar, doing TV presenting, charity work. She's a highly dynamic person with a lot of interests and passions, and that's one of the things that I get most from her is just the passion that she has. But it's a really wide-ranging interview, and like many of the people that I've interviewed lately, she is really focused on self-improvement and her mental game. So it's a, a great interview for anybody who has a passion for learning and is always striving to improve themselves. Uh, in this show, we're also going to discuss some of her pro- her projects outside of poker that help her to keep her passion for poker really strong, uh, why learning is so important, especially during, during downswings, and how she deals with criticism, both her own internal critique and, of course, from other people. Now, if you haven't already or this is your first time listening to the podcast, please subscribe to it on iTunes and rate and review it. And if any of you have still not gotten a free copy of The Mental Game of Poker 1 or 2 on audiobook, go to jaredtendlerpoker.com backslash free and pick up a copy. It's a great deal. Without further ado, here is my interview with Liv. Liv, thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know, very, very busy schedule to talk with me today. Uh, To say that you are a person who is passionate about your passions is probably an understatement. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and I just get the sense that that like what grabs your attention just really gets you to focus on it and dive into it. Uh, and I, I I guess I wouldn't say that you'd be kind of a half-assed type of person. Is that is that right? Um, it, it entirely depends on the subject matter, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when when something really does either inspire me or uh, you know emotionally affect me in some way, be it you know get gets me upset or angry. Um, I, I do struggle to uh, sometimes, you know, n- not yeah, not not be impassioned by it. I guess. Um, so yeah, I guess half fast is is a it would be a a good word to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> right, because right, there there are just so many interests. I mean, I was just looking at your your Twitter feed today, and just uh, I'm I'm guessing the uh, march against Ivory and Rhino Horns was per- perhaps what you were just referencing and correct. Things yes, that get, get you angry. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 definitely uh, that definitely gets me going. I I would say, um, you know, I've always been very, uh, you know, huge lover of the environment, of of nature, and 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 so on. But uh, I'd say it's the one thing that really I'm by far the most passionate about now. Um, the last couple of years, it's been just growing and growing to the point where now it's it's predominating the the majority of my you know of my important thoughts. Mm. I'd say. Yeah, it does. It doesn't sound like you have many unimportant thoughts. I mean, or is that is that again? Oh, I definitely do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, like out of my thoughts, if we were to put them in percentage of important and not important, it's still like ninety-two to ninety-three percent of just what you know nonsense. Got it. <laughs> by my internal dialogue, as as with us all. Um, I suppose. Uh, that's true. But then the rest, you know, that, that is important. Uh, I I'm glad to say that I think that you know what I what I classify as important actually is important to. <laughs> To, to the world and you know to to nature and to all of all sentient beings and so on so. have you have you found over the years as your stature in both poker media and kind of mainstream mm-hmm. uh, grows that you're able to affect more of a change or do you feel like the plat like has the platform kind of given you confidence to be more uh, yeah convicted? No, go on yeah just kind of more convicted with you with your beliefs and sharing them yeah I mean it's I think you know, I started to realize, like, okay, so I've developed this following, um, you know, obviously it's nowhere near, you know, the level of some people in poker and certainly, you know, mainstream celebrities, but um, I, I've definitely sort of grown a voice and what what am I going to do with this voice? You know, am I going to continue just talking about poker hands? Am I, you know, going to talk about heavy metal or am I actually going to talk about something that is going to make, you know, a real effective change um, it, to the wider world? And... It, and yes, for, fortunately, like that's that's probably the best thing I can do, at least right now, with with what you know what I've developed over the last eight years, you know, in sort of professional life. Um, and yeah, it's it's difficult trying to find the balance between you know because if I, if I could, I would be tweeting about it all the time, and I know that I would start pissing off my followers a lot because a lot of my followers do just follow me for for poker or for you know me in some silly outfit at Burning Man or whatever. Um, 
so it's it's about finding the right balance. But uh, I've actually recently decided. Um, I used to hate blogging. I really like just didn't. I didn't really ever felt like I had anything to talk about. I'm like, really, am I going to just talk about some more poker hands and so on? Because it didn't occur to me that I could be actually blogging about anything. Mm. I don't have to blog about my life or my latest trip or isn't this cool, I did this. Actually, no, I could be talking about, you know, an interesting new discovery that I read about in, you know, in, a, in some science article and perhaps make it more accessible or actually why it is, why it really does matter to, to save, you know, species like elephant and rhinos, um, you know, not just because they're cute, which incidentally, obviously they are cute, but there's a lot, there's a much bigger sort of scientific reason behind why we need to do it. Um, so I, yeah, I'm, I, I've started writing. I haven't really published any of them yet because I'm not happy with any of, any of them. Uh, but blogs on all sorts of things to do with environmentalism, you know, conservation, climate change, uh, little simple things like energy saving t tactics that people can do, uh, things like that. And that's, uh, I, I, it's really, it's ta been taking up a lot of my time over the last month or so. Um, and actually giving me this new flow of creativity, which I've been sorely missing from my life. Um, and yeah, it's giving me, it's, I'm really excited about this direction and, uh, hopefully the blog will gain some traction. That's very cool. And it sort of nicely transitioned into my next question, which actually had to do with how all the things that you were juggling seemingly kind of fit together. And I think for some people it would probably be overwhelming, but I wonder if now you mentioned having that creativity in your life, at least having other passions and interests beyond poker, like they, they, they kind of help to keep you balanced. And if that balance then translates into helping you actually perform when, when it comes time to poker, like if you were just playing poker all the time, it seems to me like you wouldn't play as well. Definitely not. Uh, not for me, at least. So I think, you know, it's horses for courses, some people, you sure. know, the, it, it really just playing poker for them is, is just truly like fully, you know, fully satisfying. And, um, you know, they, and they, you know, they, they, it brings out the very best in themselves, and that's that's awesome. And like, in a way, I I envy those people quite a lot. Um, it's something um, that I would say I've always lacked is that sort of razor sharp focus on on just one thing and an ability to completely my, immerse myself in it without the need to to do other things to you know keep my brain keep my brain satisfied. Um, uh, but that said, yeah, having so I've always been kind of like a, a mix of scattered interests, be it, you know, guitar playing or, um, you know, learning, learning all the capital cities in the, in the world, <laughs> uh, which believe me, I, I did do once. Um, I, don't, I don't remember them all now, fortunately. Uh, and, um, so what was the, yeah, just about how, how like juggling all of those kind of helps to translate into your poker performance. Right. Yeah. I mean, being being away from the tables for a while gives you gives at least me a renewed you know hunger to get back at, back get back there. If I'm, you know, I I do find like say during the World Series after ten fifteen days of playing a tournament almost every single day, by the fifteenth day I the 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 shine has worn off mm. for me, and it's you know it literally it does become the grind and. Uh, it, it's not something that suits me. Like I said, some people are just very well fitted to the grind. They, it's their thing. They they love it, but it doesn't suit my personality type. And so, how is that essentially how you keep poker fresh for you? Is is to balance it with other things, or is there are there things within the game that you do to keep it fresh? Like I know you've got the the German contingent of players you talk to a lot, and just I'm sure you're surrounded by other great players. Does does being around them help to keep the passion uh, strong for poker? Absolutely. Because it, it points out to me every time I'm with them and I listen to them discuss hands and so on, it points out to me just how much better they are. <laughs> and it makes and that then kicks in sort of any competitive drive uh, that's still lingering. It goes, oh, well, hang on, I'm, I, I'm not even remotely close to being near the top. Uh, when I when I you know when I get to hear what the way that they're thinking, so then I go, well, I ha I can be I. I hate not knowing that I'm, I've reached my maximum potential. So um, it, it gives a refreshed drive to, to carry on learning. And yeah, learning is obviously the most satisfying thing in poker is, well, it shouldn't be, but it usually is, is winning. Um, but the winning, it, you can't rely on that to always be around. Um, you know, downswings, um, which I've been... I've been experiencing for a little while. Um, are the, you know, can be pretty extensive and and continuous and soul destroying but knowing that you are 
all the time just learning and learning and getting better and becoming more and more detached from the actual outcome of any given hand or you know cash game session or tournament um, gives you gives you again like this sort of satisfaction and uh, renewed renewed confidence. And does that does that help to sustain through that downswing? Like knowing that you are continuing to imp- improve as a player. I mean, it yes. obviously can't replace the validation that comes from having success translate on the table. But yeah, you but you it. can get the thing is like you can get that validation by going to someone. You know, I'm like I'm so fortunate, like going to you know Igor or whoever, and go, okay, well, I I lost this hand, but this is my deduct. You know, this is what I assumed his range was and, and you know and that's thus I played accordingly and I took this and he was like, Well you just broke that hand down beautifully. You you, mm. you your mindset, you know, your thought process was absolutely perfect. He said you played it exactly how I would have played it. And he said, it doesn't matter, you know, yeah, fine, you happen to, to run into the top of his range. And like that, hearing that praise, oh my God, that that is worth so much. Um and so I mean I'm very I'm I'm so damn lucky to have, you know, people like him in my life where I can just you know, have have this kind of level of discussion and you know feedback, and I'm obviously even the negative feedback is put to me in a good way, so it it, it doesn't hurt too much. But uh, yeah, it's um, that is invaluable, absolutely invaluable. You you got your start in poker, uh, being coached by Andy Duke. So from the beginning, mm-hmm. you were learning from other people. Uh, was that true for you, not just in poker but elsewhere? That you feel like you you learn best from learning from other people. I and mean, I think everybody has their own learning style. Is, is that essentially yours? That's a good question. I'm not, um, I mean, in poker, definitely that's, that's been my, my style in, uh, I'm trying to think back in like acad- academia is a combination of both. I definitely was always lucky to have great teachers at my school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at university actually was the opposite. I, was very very lazy at attending lectures um and i would generally just get like a lump of notes at the end of, you know at the end of the semester be- a few weeks before the actual exams and then it was solely my job to go through and try and understand it and make sense of it and that actually worked really well for me in in when it came to exams but it's it's hard to compare the two um but generally speaking the the just of actually yeah in things i i've learned recently perhaps about um, you know, just mindset in general and self improvement. That's almost all come from other people who are, you know, either more experienced or just wiser or have, uh, you know, just a different range of experiences to draw upon. Right, right, right. So you, you mentioned the downswing, and um, you gave a really candid interview. For, it was actually a pretty quick interview, um, and Chris, mm-hmm. uh, with Christy Arnett of uh, formerly of Poker News last year at the PCA, uh, where you'd said you'd kind of gotten to the lowest um, point mentally in your in your career. Um, essentially saying that you're kind of the biggest critic and just really, really hard on yourself. Um, how, how have you done kind of since that point uh, in, uh, in kind of pulling yourself uh, out of it, both mentally and then also uh, results-wise? Um, well, actually, yeah, if that was interview was at the start of PCA this year, then I actually went on a nice little upswing uh, for a few months. Um, and... Who knows? It could have just been purely, purely just variance. It, it could be. Um, I, I actually got work with um, a local mental coach um, here in the UK. Uh, he sort of does some work in hypnotism and so on. And I had a couple of sessions with him, mm-hmm. and I would like to put definitely some of it down to him. Like again, just really getting you know drilling home the idea of being completely detached from the outcome um, of you know, uh, of how a hand turns out and just having a, a fixed process, um, you know, and sort of teach me how to get into, you know, the zone, which we all hear about, whatever you want to call it, flow in the zone. Yeah. Um, you, you know, all, all top sportsmen and women, you know, news anchors, whatever, whatever sort of type of job someone has, which requires, uh, intensive elite performance. Um, the, they all have this strict regimen, which seems to be they have their process, whatever it is. It's just from like getting up before they they play or whatever it is they have to do, and taking each step, like each learned step, which just they know that this is what they do um, to get them into the right mental state, and taking literally each each step at a time, and not being like the moment you feel your mind going off into oh well this could lead to that and that and that. You just have to remember bring it right back to now and be like no I. 
right now I have to just practice my golf swing and just this is what I do. I do 20 swings like this and then I do that, you know, or whatever whatever the thing is. And in poker, um, I started writing down like a little a little literal list of what are the questions I ask myself in every step of a hand. You know, okay, so what is uh, what is his range here? What is my perceived range? You know, um, what uh, what what have I what what facts do I know about this person? So on and so forth. Just having this this strict regimen of thought uh, for each stage, uh, for each yeah, for each decision making, um, each decision process I have to make um, was so incredibly helpful. And again, like my then and then I would judge my success not on how the hand turned out, but on how how strictly I adhered to those those steps and those processes. And it was an amazing feeling. It was so liberating because then I could, I could pure like then I'm just totally in control of myself. Yeah, you know, I, 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 because poker is so frustrating because we can't. We're such at the mercy of the cards so often um, that you you'll unfairly chastise yourself. Oh, I played that hand badly because this is like no, the guy just happened to have the top of his range or whatever, or he just happened to do something completely random away from uh, you know the observed norm of him or whatever, and. Uh, having this, so yeah, just it gives you it gives you basically back the power of being like, well, no, my my only measurement criteria is how strictly I adhere to my my thought processes, and not on actually how any kind of outcome is. You can bust a hundred tournaments in a row, but if you stuck to what you have studied and learned to be your to be the most optimal thought process, then you should be immensely proud of yourself. Fantastic stuff. Uh, and as you were talking and thinking about this decision-making process that you've got pretty well defined, I, I guess I wonder too that if if you do get distracted, you do get maybe even a little frustrated by the results, which can happen at times. Or uh, oh, I still get it all the time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 the process becomes the thing that can kind of keep bringing you back. Like exactly, that, it's like your safety net. It's yeah. uh, and and that's the thing that I think everyone should. Um, Again, not just with poker, with any any kind of performance-related activity, uh, that's the thing you have to uh, you you have to work the hardest on. And does that translate in terms of your preparation before the event as well? Like, is there do you have um, a, a process or a routine for how you prepare before a tournament day? Yes and no. I think actually, I'm trying to think back to then. So when I had this like little this this little upswing, um, I I was definitely taking time to meditate more before I played. Mm -hmm. um, I had this like breathing exercise that I learned in the, uh, at this <laughs> yoga ashram we found in the Bahamas, which is next to the Atlantis where PCA is held. Um, and so it's like a little 15 minute breathing exercise that you do. And that definitely got me into a very uh, level headed state before playing. And I have to say recently I, I let that slip and perhaps that's why I'm, I haven't been seeing the results again over the last few months. Um, uh, so I should set that experiment to to start strictly doing that every day. Um, and the the thing with particularly with poker players on the road, our, our lives are so I mean chaotic's too too negative a word because obviously our lives are massively fun and awesome, but we just don't have a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, I, one of the most common questions I get asked by particularly mainstream media is, "Oh, Liv, what well, tell us a typical day in your life?" I'm like, <laughs> I I don't know. Is it a day where I you know I'm back home and I want to stay in bed all day because I feel like it's necessary because I'm jet lagged by, you know, I want to sleep for 10 hours or is it a day where I'm randomly up a mountain or am I in a, you know, there is no, there is no regular day and that's glamorous and romantic and, and awesome. Oh God, I mean, I love it so much, but at the same time it does then take a toll on you um, in, in things that human being, human beings need. We need, we do need some structure. We do need routine. Um, th things like that, and and I would say it's a thing that a lot a lot of poker players struggle with um, because there's no one there to, you know, we we've had rules until we were sort of 16 or whatever age we left the house, you know, clean your teeth twice a day, be in bed by this time, but now all of a sudden that's gone, and most other people then go into a job where they just have to be asleep by a certain time, and they know they have to do that, and you know they'll have a couple of weeks of holiday, but our lives are a permanent vacation, and uh, we have all this wonderful freedom, but we are sometimes our own worst enemies at then giving ourselves rules that we still need. It sounds like you almost need a flexible routine, like things that you you would do, not necessarily at a consistent time, because obviously that's somewhat impossible, 
but that things that are kind of clicked on when it comes time to play a poker tournament, for example, so that there's some structure or something that would kind of aid in that uh, warm-up. Because I, I, you know, and I certainly know well, that in order to play well, uh, you've got to be at your peak mentally. And that w- is what facilitates that high-level decision-making. It's the same of uh, an athlete getting their bodies ready to perform at their peak. So having that somewhat flexible structure that's there, like you mentioned, the the breathing exercises, the meditation, something yeah. that is routine that you know you have a hour, half hour before you go play just to get yourself in that frame. I mean, is that something that you've... It sounds like you've done it before, is it? I, I did do it, and I did see... Yeah, I, I saw some of... Uh, you know some of my best results in in you know recent times uh, because of that. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to put it down a lot of it down to that. Um, you know, car- cards <laughs> cards are relevant, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and yeah, and thinking about it, I like I'm off to play the UK IPT tomorrow. This is a, a good reminder to me to actually listen to my own damn advice and, <laughs> and do it again. <laughs> it's funny how we can all uh, be, make, yeah. it, make it easy to have have advice given to, or you know give to others but sometimes hard to do for ourselves absolutely yeah um you mentioned something earlier i want to kind of jump back to this which was around um criticism and like you said if you're speaking with a player that you whom you trust and they're giving you kind of construct constructive criticism yeah uh, that's you know obviously something that's productive but in all culture on many levels especially on the internet um much of the criticism out there ends up being very negative and kind of full of vitriol. Um, mm-hmm. And you said it in an interview uh, that I thought was really interesting, mostly because I just never thought about it. I, it being a guy, uh, probably am like many guys who just don't think about this very often, but you said that, that women often get a disproportionate amount of the criticism and much more than they deserve. Can you just kind of talk about that a little bit, just to kind of educate all of us male idiots out here who don't quite understand or see that? Um, well, uh, first of all, I don't like you're not male idiots by any means. You're like, no, but really, it's I, I hate you know I hate creating any kind of disparity in 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 terms of you know who's right or wrong about certain things. But it is if it really you know as much as people hate to hate to admit it, but if you actually spend some time reading you know posts about any female player, any player, even you know someone like Selps, who is obviously world class, that like, people will just find. Anything they can to 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 latch onto that could be remotely construed as negative, um, and 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 yeah, it's like this. Oh, 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 a girl won. Okay, well, she must have gotten lucky, you know. Mm. And yes, those attitudes are improving, and uh, by all means, it's not everybody. But by all means, and it's probably just as often the case with like internet trolls and so on. It's very vocal minority that you're hearing and therefore it's, it's creating uh, you know, a, an unreasonable bias in everyone's minds of what people actually think. But that said, this, this, it's, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a man, I don't understand why it is that people, you know, a, lo- a, lot of, a lot of people struggle to accept that a woman did well because she got lucky. Yes, of course she got lucky to win a tournament because it's a tournament and you have to get lucky, as did Phil Ivey to win a tournament, as did you know anybody as did self did you know all these great players everyone has to get lucky to win a tournament um and yes perhaps yes sometimes someone does win who's an unknown and you know like you know i know i got a lot of shit when i when i won ept San Remo. oh she got lucky well of course i did it was a thousand player tournament i got massively lucky uh you know i was you know <laughs> and it's an interesting thing Igor pointed out i was like bitching to me the other day about like oh i can't you know i i like my, I can't win a damn tournament on stars anymore. Like I just, you know, my dominations don't work. Blah 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 blah. I'm and and, I, and then I'll be like, I'm no good. And he's just like, shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you know, look at the kind of, you know, yes, this downswing you're on is horrible, but the it's so easy to have an upswing too. Look at the upswing you had when you won San Remo. You know, were you, do, you know, did you play well? I was like, well, yeah, I played the best I could then. He's like, yeah, but would you play that you heads up right now? I'm like, oh my god, like a million times over. I was horrible then compared to how I am. Um, and uh, I'm digressing from the original point, um, which was oh, oh, interesting though about just the disproportionate critic criticism. Ex- yeah, um, yeah, and it's just like, it, you know, people. I don't know. I mean, it, to be fair, like a lot of main event winners get it too. Like when Joe Carter won the main, you know, he, you know, everyone was just very quick to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, well, he did get lucky. Yes, of course he got lucky. Um, as would, you know, if 
Darwin Moon had won or if Phil Ivey had won. Um, but people, I don't know, they... <sighs> I mean, I mean, as with all, as with all like internet trolls and so on, it's coming from insecurity. Like, if someone is, there are people out there who just it must suck. Like, they just they spend a lot of time on the internet looking for negative things to say, because they 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 hate their current situation, whatever it is, the the mindset that they're living in, um, and it, it's it's just such a shame because people do read this stuff. You know, the the players themselves read it. Like I know I've read it and like taken it to heart far too many times. Um, and you know, the, people aren't as deluded. You know, when someone wins a big tournament, they're not as deluded as as they. Well, very rarely are they deluded, but they think they are the best. And more often than not, then this can hurt the game further because then perhaps a, a you know another woman wants to come into the game and is googled the, the, their hero, and then they're like, well, wait, everyone's just saying she's like, oh, everyone's oh wow, everyone seems to. Hate what what the hell? What how is this helping our you know our industry? Like we like everyone knows it'd be great if more women play, because um, it's gonna it's a huge untapped market. Um, and I don't know it's just it, it's just a. But the market has to be more receptive and open. And yeah, and, and, and like I said, it is massively a very vocal minority. Um, the majority of the time, people are very supportive, but you still I don't know you still see a lot of regular regular players who just the moment. A known, it's not even necessarily just a woman, but a known player makes a bit of a fuck up, which they're going to do. Well, they don't play a hand quite optimally. They, 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 they find a way to post about it on the internet and like, look, 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 look what they did. Look, they're no good. They're no good at all. And I mean, of course, it's just to like make themselves feel better, but it's, it, it's not, con it's not constructive to anyone, and certainly not to the, to, to themselves. So like, next time you want to go criticizing a player, just go, okay, well, they didn't play this right. Well, learn from it, but keep it to yourself. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It do, all it does is bring yourself down and the industry down a little bit by by trying to bash by bash someone else's success. Well, since you're doing a lot more blogging, um, this would be a cool topic. I would love for to hear kind of more of your thoughts on this. Um, it's it's and I also say that because it's I think it's a really important one. Um, women in poker, I think, need to continue to feel more and more comfortable just being there. I I coach several women players, particularly live players, and and. Mm -hmm. Their experiences uh, are sometimes horrendous. Really, I mean, it's like despicable sometimes the the treatment that they can get. Uh, and I, I yeah, agree I mean, with you that the like, people, people people go, oh, it's you know, no, oh, no one ever says anything in in life, and it's true. Like I barely have anyone ever say anything mean to me in person or live, but it's on it's online, uh, and it's there's really no difference because I don't know whether they just assume that the person isn't going to read it, or maybe they hope that the person does read it. But it's no, it's no different to, in fact, it's, it's significantly less honorable than just saying it to the person's face. I mean, we've all heard the classic, well, you know, you're going to talk about shit about me, say it to my face. But obviously that's too confrontational and puts, puts the, you know, the bullier or whatever you want to call them, you know, into a difficult spot, which obviously they're desperately trying to avoid. But, um, yeah, it, it's like... If you don't have anything good to say about someone, just just don't say it at all. Particularly not on the internet, like because it's it's going to be seen and it's going to be seen by others, and it's just going to instead of add, you know, add something to the to the world, something positive. It's just it's just taking it away a little bit or slowing down the progress at least, just of everybody that not just that person, but um, the you know just everybody else that reads it it's just it's just perpetuating this negative mindset which it just doesn't do anything at all other than give you know the writer a temporary bit of respite from their self-loathing <laughs> yeah and, and, and actually it just makes it even worse for them because it gets them further and further into this mindset of you know attacking others instead of constructively improving themselves exactly i was just going to make that that last point as well that it would be far better and for those who are listening to this and do uh react negatively to people in general and often from a, a place of insecurity you know put the mirror back on yourself uh because that's the only way and, and, really and by out. and by all means like i'm i'm saying this from uh, experience of both sides i have been just as guilty of massive jealousy um of I'm, i've never like written bad stuff on the internet i haven't you know like ever ever done that but I've, I've had times where i've been tempted i have to say when like i've seen someone who's you know done well who i see as a threat or whatever um and I, I, you know, I think somehow might lessen my status, which is ridiculous. Um, I, you know, I've, I've had that like, sort of that uh, that old egoic urge to be like, ah, but but this they played that hand badly or whatever. But like, you just you 
it just doesn't you've got to take take a step back and go is this improving me in any way is this it doesn't really make you feel better does it no of course not. it'll like maybe give you temporary like ha ha but the 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 trueness of yourself isn't being improved in any way it's it's like the classic old saying don't say anything about someone unless you you know unless you what is the actual phrase <laughs> Don't uh, say anything nice unless you can. Exactly, that's it. Yeah. Um, and and it, but there's just so much truth to that. It's just um, and it's it's such a simple rule to try and follow uh, and stick to, and and you will start seeing like just much much bigger personal benefits from it in the long run. Great advice and a great place to end. I know you've given a lot of your time already uh, today. With thank you so much. And, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, excellent. Well, uh, I wish you certainly well over the next uh, couple of days here with the. The UK IPT and the EPT coming up here. See you. Cheers, Dad. Uh, I'm going to start my breathing exercise. <laughs> <again>. <laughs> Wonderful. For those of you up on the term and poker schedule, you'll know that this interview was recorded a couple weeks ago. Since the UK IPT and the EPT event are already over, and Liv actually made quite a good showing in the main event of the EPT, finishing 27th. So hopefully those breathing exercises helped, and perhaps it was a little bit of mental game of poker podcast run good since Jake Cody, my previous guest, finished in fifth. Thanks again to Liv for coming on the show today. If you want to find out more about her, you can always go to her website, livberry.com, or follow her on Twitter, at Liv underscore Barry. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, at Jared Tendler. That is it for today's show, and I will be back very soon with another great guest. Until then, I wish you all very well. <laughs>